here, 5 to 7, it's 10, 10 to 12. Oh, you said 10, 10 to 12? 12. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Okay, ready? Okay. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Um, how are we doing? Great. Great. It's trying to stay warm. <laughs> it's been freezing, and I know it slows us down. But in our side of the world, it's not slow and it's not uh, holiday time. Uh, we are just developing our 600 page report, which is due by the end of December. So we are just crunching and we are in a, in a difficult time. We luckily had three hours of spare time yesterday when our draft version went to the printing. So I thought maybe I can uh, take this opportunity and I'm not really exaggerating. Tariq and Mahesh are here to t testify <laughs> what we are going through. <clears throat> so when you sent me that email on Monday morning, I was just about this close to just <coughs> decline your request. And then I took a moment of pause. And uh, I thought to myself, um, you know, um, yeah, it's going to be very easy for me to decline. But I can do this. I have been telling my staff, uh, especially I've been telling Tariq, I have been telling, uh, I used to tell Jamie that always take risks, always go beyond your comfort zone and take all the opportunities. So I really can't back off now. I need to set an example. So here I am. Um, I'm going to speak about education. And I know you are wondering whether I'm going to talk about uh, my education or education in general. But I'm going to talk about uh, a theory of uh, education from Albert Einstein. Yeah, it's not theory of relativity that he talked about. What I'm going to focus on is um, his views on education and try to reflect some of this, some on that matter. Little background: <clears throat> a couple months back, I was um, I was uh, watching TV. Actually, I should say I was listening to the TV because most of the time I listen to the TV while doing my stuff. And it was a channel from back home. Before I say that, I am not sure whether I made this talk before, but I'm not um, asking for any credit. So if I may have said this talk before, please excuse me. I just uh, saw this was in my um, ideas, and I thought maybe I can do this. So. Um, so I apologize if I have say, uh, spoke about this before. So um, uh, I was watching the TV, and it was a back home channel. And there was a um, <clears throat> learned physici uh, physicist from Bangladesh. His name is Dr. Ali Asghar. So he was uh, being interviewed. And uh, the interviewer was asking him, um, <clears throat> can you reflect on your education? And he said, you know what? Um, I am doing, oh, I was, um, when I was in school or college or university, I never realized what I studied until I was in a PhD program. And um, <clears throat> in Bangladesh, you have a different uh, British system, so we have five years of elementary school, five years of um, higher schools. Then you have two years of college, then you go on four years of uh, whatever degree you want to achieve. So he says all these years he learned something, but um, uh, it all came into circle, full circle to him when he was doing his postgraduate study. And I thought, wow, that seems very interesting. So, and then he go on, went on and said, like, you know, about uh, Albert Einstein's theory. So I, I just, a little closely and he said, Albert Einstein said, education is what remains after one has forgotten what one or one has learned in school. I was like, wow, okay, let me repeat it for you again. Education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned in school. So I thought, well, that's, that's very interesting. And then I started thinking about it, what he tried to say. So I'm, this is my explanation. I'm thinking like maybe he wanted to mention that, you know, we learn so many different things in schools, colleges, uh, so many different ideas, concepts, theories. Does everything stay with, with you? No, you don't retain everything. 
but there are some that you all retain and that goes on forever and you'd never forget those. So that's probably one's real education. I think that's what he's trying to uh, reflect on. <clears throat> so I was thinking more what I remember and I was just wondering uh, if you guys remember a story of the gift of magi. I don't know anybody studied. We studied in college gift of magi. It was a story about a couple, about their love. Uh, they wanted to gift uh, each of them something special, but uh, about a wristwatch and uh, a hair and something. But by the time they were there, uh, but the lady cut her hair, so the gift was no longer any use for her, and the guy did something to his wristwatch. Anyway, that was a very um, touchy story about love, and um, I, I thought I would never forget that. And then another story that I remembered was the story of Tolstoy about three questions. And uh, the story was about a hermit being asked about the three questions. And the last question was, what is a good time? And the hermit said, now is the best time. And I don't know why it happened, but it just imprinted in my brain. From then on, I always think when I do something, <coughs> When I procrastinate especially, I always think, okay, now is the best time. I should not be procrastinating. And I always tell my kids, yeah, don't do that. Now is the best time. You do it now. <clears throat> so these are the things. I think those are my, uh, my personal education that I gained from my childhood. And uh, then Dr. Ali Asghar, who was um, this renowned physician, uh, physicist, he taught us quantum theory. Then we learned Taylor series. We learned um, uh, what you call uh, uh, Laplace's transformation Fourier series. Some of you are, <laughs> who are the engineers, I'm sh sure you know what I'm talking about. Do you have any idea what you did or what you learned? I don't, because I know we have gone through, and at that time, maybe we we were expert, we were solving problems, but nothing stayed with us. So I'm just telling you guys that according to Albert Einstein, whatever stays with you, <laughs> in you and whatever is, um, is uh, remaining with you is the real education. And I um, wanted to give you one metaphor. Like if you watch a movie, there are so many characters. There are main characters, there are side characters, villains and all these, you know. Um, not everybody plays the same amount of roles, but um, all the side characters actually help the main character to empower. So they are not less important. They, they may be less important for the, uh, for the sake of the movie, but um, but they have their own roles and they are important in the way because they are making some, um, some contribution to the main characters. So all these educations that we did in our lifetime, I'm not saying that they are not relevant or they were not needed. They were all very relevant to that time frame. Uh, maybe it, they were not needed to the later part of our lives, but they all had some contribution to our lives. So with that said, I just wanted to say that, <clears throat> you know, education is what remains after one has lost um, or forgotten what he learned. Wanted to ask you what you guys think about your education, and more importantly, how your education transformed you to what you are today, and how you'd like to share that education with others, because I think that's how you become a very, um, you become a better person because you're sh sharing your education with others and you are learning a lot and, and you are becoming more proficient. So when you go to bed tonight, I would like you to think, to think <laughs> about your education, what made you what you are today and how you are thinking of sharing it with Tracy, with uh, Mahesh or Cherry. Thanks. Thanks. Thank Thank you very much. Good speech.